Hello, what's up everybody? My name is Carlos Betraga Pinzon, RTRVI. Welcome back to my channel, Lazy Bones Radiology. In today's episode, I'll be covering the hands. But before we start, don't forget to press that like button and subscribe and share with your friends so we can all learn together. Let's begin. The anatomical position. This is when a patient stands erect with the face and eyes facing forward, arms are extended by the sides, hands are facing forward, and the toes are pointed forward also known as the neutral position, do not forget it. The following definitions were gathered from Merrill's Atlas of Radiographic Positioning Procedures. This is a series that I used when I was a student, so I highly recommend it. The hand. Before we jump into the positioning, we first have to review the anatomy of the hand, as you can see here on my model. The digits are numerically named one through five, starting from lateral to medial. As stated in the previous video, there are 14 phalanxes within the five digits with their specific joints between them. Now moving proximal into the hand, the next group of bones are known as the metacarpal bones, named numerically one through five, starting from lateral to medial, exactly like the digits. The next group is known as the carpal bones, which we'll cover in further detail when we cover the wrists in the next video. And lastly, the distal part of the radius and ulna bones. Anatomy of the hand. The phalanxes, you have the distal, middle, and the proximal phalanxes. In between them, you have the distal interphalangeal joints or the dip joints that are located within the second through fifth digits. Next, you have the proximal interphalangeal joints, also known as the pip joints, the interphalangeal joint, which is only found in the first digit. Next is the metacarpals, as you can see here. Remember to know which one is which, starting from lateral to medial, one through five. In between those is the metacarpal phalangeal joints, also known as the MCP joints. Next is the carpal bones, and in between them there are the carpal metacarpal joints, known as the CMC joints, and lastly the radius, which is on the lateral side, and the ulna, which is in the medial side. Do not get those confused. Please make sure to review and be knowledgeable with the anatomy, because knowing your anatomy is very important for the positioning part. PA projection. This is when the patient is seated, and the position is when the hand is placed palmar side down and the fingers are extended. Central is perpendicular to the third MCP joint, as you can see here on the right-hand side. And make sure to collimate the entire hand in the distal part of the radius and ulna. SID is 40 inches. Make sure to label correctly. Let's practice. What are we imaging? This is the right hand, as you can see here. What is the projection? This is a PA projection. What is the position? The hand is pronated with the fingers separated. Now let's practice some anatomy. Distal phalanx of the first digit, middle phalanx of the third digit, proximal phalanx of the second digit, dip joint of the fourth digit, pip joint of the second digit, fifth metacarpal, third MCP joint, radius, and ulna. It's very important to be familiar with the anatomy, as you can see here. On a test, you're going to have to be able to identify the actual anatomy. PA oblique projection with lateral rotation. Patient seated, as you can see here. Position of the part is the hand is placed palmar side down and rotated laterally until the hand is approximately 45 degrees with the IR. There are two types of obliques. You have your extension and regular. So the extended oblique, the fingers are extended for joint space evaluation and oblique metacarpals, as you can see here. While an oblique projection, a regular, is just to see the oblique metacarpals of the hand, as you can see here. Central is perpendicular to the third MCP joint. Make sure to collimate the entire hand, including the distal part of the radius and ulnar bone. SID is 40 inches. Make sure to label correctly. Now let's look at the difference between the extension and the regular obliques. Do you see the difference between them? You're able to evaluate the joint space within the phalanges on the extended oblique, while in the regular oblique, the joint spaces are being obstructed. Now let's practice. What are we imaging? This is the right hand. What is the projection? This is a PA oblique projection. What is the position? The hand is pronated with lateral rotation. Now let's practice some anatomy. Distal phalanx of the first digit. 
middle phalanx of the third digit, proximal phalanx of the second digit, dip joint of the fourth digit, pip joint of the second digit, fifth metacarpal, third MCP, radius, and ulna. I know it's becoming repetitive, but it's very important you understand the anatomy. Lateral projection, medial lateral and lateral medial extension. Patient seated, as you can see here on our hand side, and there's two forms of positioning of the hand, with the lateral or the medial side down with the fingers extended, or fingers are superimposed. This is a lateral medial projection, while this is a medial lateral projection. Do you see the difference between them? Make sure the central ray is perpendicular to the second MCP when you're talking about a lateral medial projection or the fifth metacarpal phalanger joint when it's a medial lateral projection. Make sure to collimate the entire hand in the field of view, including the distal part of the radius and ulna. This position is used to evaluate the hand for foreign bodies and to evaluate metacarpal fracture displacement. SID's 40 inches. Make sure to labor correctly. Let's practice. What is this projection? This is a lateral medial projection. As you can see here, the thumb is more magnified because it's closer to the central ray. While a medial lateral projection, the thumb is further away or more to the anatomical size. Do you see the difference? So what are we imaging? This is a right hand. What is the position? Lateral. So phalanges are superimposed. Metacarpals are superimposed. Next is the carpal group. And finally, the radius and ulna are superimposed or are stacked on top of each other. Next, we have our third lateral, which is known as a fan lateral. Patient seated, as you can see here, and the position of the hand is with medial side down and the fingers are separated. It is very important that the radius and ulna are superimposed when you're positioning. Central ray is perpendicular to the second MCP joint, as you can see here. Make sure to collimate the entire hand in the distal part of the radius and ulna. SID is 40 inches, and make sure to label correctly. Here's an example of a fan lateral. So what are we imaging? This is the right hand. What is the projection? This is a lateral medial projection. What is the position? This is a fan lateral. Now let's practice your anatomy again. Distal phalanx of the first digit, middle phalanx of the third digit, dip joint of the fourth digit, metacarpal phalange joint of the first digit, the metacarpals that are superimposed, the carpal group, and the radius ulna that are superimposed. Please make sure to review and be knowledgeable with these positions. The next section is going to be special projections and methods. Lateral projection, lateral medial inflection, patient seated, position of the hand is placed with the medial side down, fingers are flexed and superimposed. Make sure the thumb is parallel with the IR as you can see here on the right hand side. Centroid is perpendicular to the second metacarpal phalangia joint. This is used to evaluate the hand if the patient is unable to extend the hand due to injury. Make sure to collimate the entire hand and field of view, including the distal part of the radius and ulna. SID is 40 inches, and make sure to label correctly. Lastly, the AP oblique projection with medial rotation, the Norgard method, or the ball catcher position. This is when the patient is seated, like before. Position is with both of the hands are placed in the half supine position with medial side down and fingers are extended, or 45 degrees from the IR. This method is used for early diagnosing of rheumatoid arthritis by evaluating the symmetry of the hands and the demilarization of the bony structures. Low KVP is used for optimal resolution and contrast. Central is perpendicular to the midpoint between the hands at the level of the MCP joints. Make sure to collimate both hands in the field of view, including the distal part of the radius and ulna. SID is 40 inches, and make sure to label correctly. Here's an example of the Norgard method. As you can see here, the hands are placed at a 45 degree angle. Central A is at the level of the MCP joints. And here's an example of the Norgard method. Make sure to be able to identify the anatomy it is very important that you practice your anatomy so you can be able to identify structures when you're looking at a diagnosable image. Practice with your friends and family so you can be familiar with the positions. At first it's going to be difficult to position the patient. 
That's why working on your communication skills is very important in order to get a diagnosable image. Make sure to practice, 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 and please rewatch as many times as you need in order to understand the different positions. This concludes today's video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to review and take lots of notes. Lastly, don't forget to press the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share with your friends so we can all learn together. Also, follow me on Instagram at lazybones underscore radiology. Thank you very much. Till next time. Have a great day.